Hello everyone, welcome back to Chill Deal Trades, where I analyze the market so you know what's going on. Today we're going to be giving an update on Ford, did a video about a month ago, go check that out. Cause today we're going to be covering the technicals, so how does the chart look with the current price pullback and some of the more recent news that might be impacting the stock. Uh, if you haven't hit the sub button, please do and join the squad, but let's get into the content. Um, so let's just start out with some news on Ford because there's been kind of a mix, I think, of good and bad news. Um, this is not the news I want to start with, actually. The noise the news, the news I want to start with is a super big win for Ford. So they just announced that, as we all know, there's been this in really gnarly ship sh um, chip shortage um, for basically every car company. And so Ford just said they got a big, uh, they got a bunch of chips in and they're going to be sending out thousands of high, these are in really high demand right now the the f-150 is in crazy demand as all car dealerships are um and so there's going to be that's going to bring in a lot more revenue in this next quarter um and that kind of brings us to our next point is we did see that gm kind of destroyed ford in the last last quarter um as but Toyota did the best and so we are seeing a little bit of slowness in Ford but that could also be connected to just the short that's been the shortage of chips that has been happening so I would say yes it's a con but it's good that Ford is continuing to get the chips they need to get the, the car the trucks out to dealers that's a, that's a really big win for them um, I think what's interesting about the car industry right now is because there's still so much high demand for cars People, I think, at this point are just buying what's available and the best deal. Because there's so few cars still because of the chip shortage, um, people don't get you don't get discounts on cars anymore. You're buying full price ticker or full price <laughs> the full um, sticker price for a car. And so there's times that if Ford's out of truck, someone's not going to wait for a Ford. They're going to go and buy a GM. Or they're going to go buy this car or that car. And so I think right now it's just a tug of war. And now that Ford is getting has gotten all these chips and sending, starting to send out trucks, we should see a little bit of increase next quarter um, of revenue. So that's a big one. This is unfortunately some more negative news. Let's get this ad out of here. Uh, Ford lost their CTO to Amazon. So he's been at the company for the last six years-ish um, from Lockheed Martin. So... I would say a CTO doesn't make the company, but that person's perspective and, and leadership can have law, lasting impact. So we don't know how many ideas came from him or how much of, I would say morally, more into the, the electric vehicles, how much impact that he had on the company moving that direction. But there has been, I think, a really great foundation set up for Ford you know, on their trucks, uh, their electric trucks, and obviously the company is recovering well. And so hopefully there's enough of a base of support at the company that the CTO leaving doesn't have a big impact, but we'll have to see moving forward because when you have C-suite management move in and out, they all have different um, desires for the company. And so we'll have to see once someone new steps in, what changes or adjustments they want to make in terms of the evolution and the technology development of their vehicles. The last um, main news that came out was that F Ford has actually had to st pause the new Bronco production, one due to chip shortages, and then they have a, a leaky roof um, on it. So this is, I would say, another big loss in the short term um, because I don't know if you've seen the ads. I've seen some ads for the Broncos. They look really sick. If you remember Bron, if you're old enough to remember Broncos back in the day, they looked a lot different, and these are pretty sweet looking. And so this is a short-term loss, but I think in the long term, they'll be all right as long as they fix this issue quickly. So that's some of the news. What do you guys think about the news? Do you think that it's going to have more negative or positive impact on the stock? Now that we covered kind of the news over the last month, let's go ahead and jump into some quick fundamentals just to hit on a couple more topics um, because the price has pulled back and we need to understand why. So the first thing I want to look at is just P-E ratio. I mentioned this in my first video, but... A forward P.E. ratio of 8 is telling us that they're expecting really good growth for the company. And that's a really big positive because when we're, wrong one, 
when we're comparing it to other companies. So, you know, where is the industry average for PE ratios? Because when you think of more value names or bigger companies, PE ratios have a much bigger impact compared to the smaller companies that are growing like a PLTR or something, if you've heard of that company. And so, you know, right now, Ford's PE ratio is at about a 13 compared to this site, pretty close to the 14. Um, but we see the medium at about a, about a eight and a half. And we do see GM just below a 10. And so they are a little rich right now um, based on the industry average and medium, especially when we're thinking who is their biggest, I think, um, their biggest competitor right now in terms of the direction the company is going is GM. And so we're really going to want to pay attention to the valuations between those two companies because I think they are going to be staying really close. So either GM's valuation is going to push up a little bit or Ford's valuation needs to come down or they need to meet somewhere in the middle. Um, but on that point, I just want to point out long-term growth estimates. So kind of looking back since 2010, I'll give you a simpler view, is we've kind of saw this back and forth for years and we kind of saw a steady incline of, of growth into 2018, but then we saw, you know, a couple years of slow downturn. And that's when we saw Ford, there's a lot of, I think, internal things going on with Ford. Um, and their sales were slowing. And I think they had a lot of identity issues as a company and what they wanted to do. You know, they're like, we're, we're going to keep all cars. And then they're like, we're just going to do trucks. And it was this back and forth in decision making. But the main thing I want to highlight is obviously after a, a really tough 2020, like a lot of these companies had, look at the growth we're expecting. You know, by next year, we're expecting to get back to the levels we were in 2016 uh, 2017, and then 2022, just a year later, the estimates are thinking that Ford is going to have their biggest year in revenue in the last 12 years. And so that's a super big win. Seeing the revenue, 12% growth in 2021, 19% in 2022. When we look back historically, we don't see numbers that high over the last few years. And so that's a really big win. The second thing I want to look at is um, EBITDA. So we're seeing, obviously, this is a down year, so whatever on that one. But if we look at 2022, a 30% growth in EBITDA, that's really, really important because that's going to be their cash, you know, their free cash flow that they're either paying down debt on or they're accumulating more cash um, or maybe pushing into more um, investment into the EV side of the business. So that's good that we're going to see that. And I think part of that's due is when we look at um, at gross margins, we see gross margins, that's too much on that chart, sorry everyone, gross margins are increasing, which is good. After having about four years of kind of pretty downhill accelerant in their margins, um, we're seeing margins get back to the 14, 15 range. And when we look back at maybe some of their more better years where we're in the 14 to 17 range in gross margins, so that's really big win for the company. I think a couple things that we really need to think about is um, I think, all the car companies right now are seeing this big demand, um, which is good. But what we're going to have to keep a really close eye on with any car company, especially Ford, is these 21 and 22 numbers are estimates. So we don't know if they're going to happen. But what we don't want to happen is an overproduction of vehicles because they're kicking out tons of vehicles. They're just shorter. So we have these big lots of cars that are incomplete. And so what we have to watch for is if demand for cars slow. And so you're really going to want to pay attention to their quarterly numbers and their car deliveries, because if we start seeing that taper off, but they're continuing to build their inventory, some of these expectations could not potentially be met. And that's going to cause some downward momentum for the company. So it's, that's a, a really, really important um, aspect that we want to pay attention to. Um, but from here, let's go on to the charts um, to kind of see what's going on. So in my video a month ago, I mentioned that we're going to have really important resistance kind of in this 16 to 17 zone. And I was like, there's more. I made this video back at the beginning of June. I said 90% chance we're not going to break above that. And look what we did. We didn't break above. And there were a couple reasons. The first one, we're overbought in that time. And when we look historically speaking, you always have to look at what happened historically for a stock. What happens when we get overbought in Ford? A drop at the overbought area. A small drop because that wasn't that overbought. Big overbought. You know, that was a little bit pre, but you see it. This is what well, that's the COVID. So it's it's not really a full story, but we do see a drop at that over 
bought territory. And so we haven't really been truly overbought. We saw a small candle hit here and we saw a drop. But look how big oversold we are here. A drop was necessary. I'm not just making shit up in my videos, guys. I promise. When I do analysis, I've spent many years understanding how stocks react. And so as I mentioned in my video, we need to look for this gap fill. And not to pat myself on the back, but look what we're getting close to. We're getting really close to that gap fill on the pullback. So this is the first area that we want to look at as a support as we do also see the 50 day coming up around that gap fill. I think that's going to be the first area of support. If we continue to break down from there, we're going to want to look at the 1350 to the $12 range or 1350 to $13 range because we have big supports there as you see. You know, there's a lot of candles here and there's that big candle there. Um, but we're also coming up on the 100 day moving average which is going to be another support I would say for long-term bullishness I would say unless we get a really big reset as there might be a correction coming in the next month in the overall stock market we need to hold this hundred day especially for long-term um, bullishness for the stock and the reason I say that is when we go back in the past on pullbacks we typically don't go lower than the 50 day or the hundred day on a pullback so if we go back to the beginning of COVID when we started getting back above those SMAs, every pullback hit either the 50 day or the 100 day. Here we hit both, bounced off. Here we hit the 100 day, is that correct? Yeah, we hit the 100 day, bounced off. Here we hit the 50 day, bounced off. Here we broke below, you know, there's a little bit, that's when the market kind of freaked out around that May time. But then we broke back above. We haven't come back to test these yet. And so we're going to have to be looking at the 50 or the 100 to figure out how drastic of a pullback. If for some reason we continue to get a lot of negative momentum in the market, the next part we want to look at, um, the next price target we want to look at is at the 200 day. And I would say to keep the bullish trend in the long term, the 200 day is going to be really important to hold. If we break back below 200 day, I would say it's pretty bearish on the stock. As you can kind of see in the past, when we've come along this 200 day, not breaking above it makes it means the stock's going lower. Even when we come here, we didn't break above the 200 day, we saw negative momentum in the stock. And so in order to hold long term support and bullish momentum, we need to stay above the 200 day. And again, you see it as also a really important support line. I would say even if we start coming down here, um, the 200 day is going to kind of creep up into this range, probably somewhere around here. And so this area right here is so important. And the main reason I say that is because we see a lot of consolidation. So if a stock comes back and breaks below an important range of consolidation, as well as breaks below all the SMAs, especially the 200 day, then we're going to potentially see a lot more negative momentum in this stock. The chances of that I don't think are really large, but you never know it can happen in the market. So I mentioned look for the 50 day around this gap fill where we're at right now. If we can hold that, we'll probably get some more positive momentum. If not, the 100 day at around $13. And then if we don't hold that, we're going to want to look for a pullback into this consolidation zone between, what is that, $13 and $11, somewhere in that range. And the 200 day being the most important price. Um, but that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for sticking around. And I really want to know what you think. Where do you think stocks, uh, forward stock is headed from here? Do you think we're just getting a little bit of a short-term correction so we can go higher? Or do you think this is going to extend a little bit longer? Maybe go sideways. Um, but I want to plug a couple other quick things. So I have a Discord. The link is in the description. Go check that out. We have about 30 members so far. And the community is growing, which is pretty amazing. And slowly getting more active. We talk about Ford in there a lot, so go ahead and join. The second thing I want to plug is every Saturday and Sunday I do a live stream on Twitch. So that link is also in the description. It's called Stock Talk Game. Me and my buddy play video games and talk about the stock market on Saturdays. And on Sunday nights we do live charting free for all. So you can come in the chat, tell me whatever stock you want me to chart, and we'll talk about it live on the stream. And we're building up a little community there. We usually have about five or six people in there um, that are always in there, and then we'll get randoms coming in and kind of chiming in. So that's all I got for you guys, but I make um, daily videos. So I'll see you again tomorrow.